Hey guys, Bar from TSD Industries here. In this video, we'll be showing you the installation of our new integrated taillight system for the 2019 and up Kawasaki Ninja ZX6R. Our taillight exists in two different variants. We have smoke lens and clear lens versions. Same exact geometry, same exact specs. They just vary in the different lens color. As you can see here, some guys opt for clear, some guys opt for smoke. Ample brightness from both units. For this installation, we'll just use the smoked one. We've pre-fitted our taillights with OEM connectors, so installation's plug and play. The light installs in the same exact way as the OEM taillight, so no fuss there. Our taillights come with load balancing resistors. This has become sort of a industry standard for fixing the flash rate. In case you guys don't know, anytime you replace the OEM incandescent light bulb signals with LED signals, your system will alert you that something's going on by flashing faster. This is very common. So that's why we supply these resistors with every kit. As an upgrade, we recommend using our Gen 2 flasher relay. This is a plug and play component and it doesn't require the wiring of, of these components into your bike. One extra note I wanna make is that we have added a programming feature to our taillights. You have access to nine different program states for different light functions via the press of a button. Each button press will toggle through subsequent program. You have three different modes for signal, three different modes for brake. Combination of those makes nine different states. Now, without further ado, I'd like to disassemble the components off this bike, and put this beautiful tail light on it so you guys can see just how great the tail end of the bike looks with our system. Follow along, let's get started. First step, we'll be removing the license plate off the bike and keeping the hardware that currently holds it on. We'll be reusing all of that. Now let's go ahead and get rid of the seats. On this particular bike, the key unlocks the front driver's seat. And there's an additional cable pull that removes the passenger seat. Now we have access to all this good stuff here. We'll start pulling out some fasteners. All right, so now using a four millimeter Allen, we'll start removing these fasteners here. The rearmost here is a longer one and it has this nylon washer on it. The mid fastener is a short one. Also has a washer on it. And the forward one is a longer fastener, but has no washer. So keep track of these fasteners you're taking out. You'll be putting them in back in the same order they came out. Now we will push the centers in on these rivet type fasteners. There are four of them. When you push the center in, that unlocks them. And then we can just pick them out like that. And now we can start taking down these painted panels. I'm gonna start from the back. There's a little tab in here that has a ramping locking feature. If we work that out first, it releases everything else. So be careful that it doesn't get damaged in the disassembly. Okay, now that that's out, we have a series of fasteners that are of the friction type. They fit into rubber O-rings. And then up front, we have one more friction fastener. Here's my thumb, push that forward as I rotate this section. There is a tab feature. If you rotate it, it'll come out. All right, so we have our grommets that fit all these interference geometry locks, and we have that tab that came out of here. We'll repeat the procedure on the opposite side of the bike. And now I will grab a Phillips and turn out the head of this 
plastic fastener. Same on the other side. Now this panel is pretty much free. We just have cable routing system here that unlocks and we can put that to the side as well. Now that we have access here, we'll need to remove this 10 millimeter head and this 10 millimeter head fastener and that will give us access to the screws for the fender They're underneath. Okay, now as this comes out, you'll notice that it's plugged in under the same boot as all of your electrical equipment that goes to the fender. So you could either disconnect this exhaust servo, and put it to the side, and remember not to power up the bike while this is disconnected, otherwise you'll throw a code. Or you can just leave it hanging like this. What I'll do is grab a rag to protect my plastics that way we don't sustain any damage here as it lays here and we'll disconnect all of these components that go to the license plate light and the signals now these are free so we'll need a five millimeter allen to get these four fasteners out and also a phillips to get these two out Once I get down to the last fastener here, I will support the fender from the bottom with my hand. So it doesn't just drop. And now it's completely free. We'll cut the wires and put this to the side. All right, so at this point, let's disconnect the main taillight plug. I'll have to remove it from the frame. It does have a clip type feature that holds it onto the frame. We're gonna compress it and push it down like that. Turn it around, expose the locking feature that keeps the plugs locked together. Also undo this cable management wiring guide. And now we can start working on removing tail light out of the bodywork. Remove these two Phillips screws. Then I will remove these two Phillips screws and then I will release this component here. Now these two Phillips screws will remove the last mounting features of the tail light and free it for us to take it out. So I'm going to use my fingers from the bottom of this tail light and push up to slip the grommets from the bosses. And then the rest of it is pretty simple. Just have to articulate plastic under tail around the tail light to remove it. We need to scavenge these grommets here. It will be reused with our new system. Now we will replace these grommets back on our new TST tail light. Once I get them in, I give them the spin test to make sure that they have seated properly. Okay, now both spin freely so they're good to go. Let's undo the wiring here. Stretch it out, get it in through the subframe here and work the tail light back into position. Get it seated on these bosses and we could immediately replace those large washer screws that hold the tail light in place. On these fastener connections, make sure you don't over tighten them. You are screwing a self threading fastener into a plastic boss. Bottom it out, get some resistance, and then leave it be. All right. I'll replace the tab and the rear section here, just like that, and using the same screws that came out of these bosses. Get this seated in there. 
I bottomed this out, but I don't tighten it fully just yet. Again, self-threading screw into plastic. You need to use good care not to over tighten. I'm actually going to tighten these at the very end after I have all my plastics in place to make sure my gaps are all aligned. It's really easy to get this skewed, as you can see, and then you'll have a larger gap on one side versus the other. So we'll just leave them kind of just bottomed out but not tightened yet. Now we'll replace this piece of plastic on this whole assembly. Slides on from the rear to the front. And we'll place the screws that came out of there. Same cautionary note, don't over tighten. All right, now this assembly is self-supporting. So we can go ahead and plug everything in. We have this wiring management, cable management wiring guide here that does have a tab behind which this wire sits. Make sure that this wire sheath is all the way towards the tail light. Our signal wires will go and plug in within this boot and our main light plug will go up here. You line up the locking feature, press it in, get a click and remount it on the frame. So we'll peel back the boot, expose our signaling plugs, and plug them in, power up the bike, and see if we got our sides correct. Left is flashing left, right is flashing right, we're good to go. So now, I will want to neaten up the wires here and get them back snapped in into the cable management guide. And now we can proceed to the replacement of whatever fender components that are going to live on your bike. We've removed the OEM fender. If you are still using the OEM fender, you can go ahead and replace it at this point. If you are doing a fender eliminator, hopefully it's one of ours. These next steps will basically pertain to our Elite One Fender Eliminator. We do have a separate video, so we will not be really showing this in detail. At this point, we can put the servo back in its place, fasten it to the frame. All the rest of the procedure from this point forward will be the reverse order of disassembly. And we'll just, when we get to this portion here, I'll show you guys how to adjust the gaps properly so you don't end up lopsided. Now that, that we have the body work already on, tightened down, I'm gonna back up on those two Phillips screws I showed you guys in a couple steps back. I'll show you just how much they can vary in here. So what we wanna do is clamp it where you like it. Make sure gaps on both sides of the tail light are equal and then tighten down on it. And voila, this looks really good. Now I can replace the seats and be done.
All right, just like that, we're done. I'm extremely pleased with how this taillight and the fender eliminator transforms the entire rear section of this motorcycle. It makes it really sexy, really techy, and it looks like whatever Kawasaki put into this tail section, it's really finished off well with our taillight system. If you guys need more info about this product and other products for this bike, please visit tstindustries.com. We'll see you there.